Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today we'll be covering four names of Allah, uh, of Al-Halim, Al-Sabur, uh, Al-Qabid, and Al-Basit. Uh, these names have the meanings of forbearance, of patience, of withholding, but also of constricting. Uh, inshallah, to begin, uh, with forbearance and patience, uh, Bismillah. The names of Al-Halim and Al-Sabur, uh, they uh, remind us that Allah is the one who witnesses and appreciates every little step that we take in the way of Allah, uh, whether they are imperfect efforts, whether they are mis uh, misfires uh, with good intentions, um, but still rewards us. And in response to these baby steps that we make, these little efforts comes running to us and, and embracing us in this way. Um, with respect to Al-Halim, uh, it describes the one, Allah, who is unperturbed by the misdeeds of people, who delays and forgives, uh, but is not affected by uh, that which, which is happening here, is, 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 uh, is above all of that, as we've talked about with respect to Allah's uh, highness, in a sense, um, is above that, but um, is not uh is not bothered or, or is not affected by it. Again, what we do is at our expense, our loss, uh, Allah is free from the need of our, uh, or the doings of our worship, of all of our deeds. Uh, Allah is free from needing anything like that. Uh, but we are the ones who are in need. And the root of this word, uh, that of this attribute, al-halim, uh, means reason. Um, and it shows that this forbearance that is shown through us, through Al-Halim, is one that is done so out of wisdom, uh, not out of any kind of haste or anger or reactivity uh, without kind of any precedence or any, any thought. Um, this name is also an epitome of strength uh, because it shows how Allah has the power and the capability and ability to punish uh, and to do uh, all that Allah so chooses to do uh, or can do in response to someone uh, or something or a situation that uh, that may come about in a different way and chooses not to do so. And uh, this really speaks to that because you could see that for the littlest things or for the most uh, out, outrageous things that might just stick out, you'd think, why doesn't Allah do something about that? Where, where is Allah in this time? Uh, and us as humans, we are very reactive beings oftentimes. Uh, and so we may jump to a conclusion, but then after a little while, we think, well, actually, you know, maybe uh, maybe we should evaluate in a different way. Think about, you know, some of the fights or arguments you might have, whether it's with your spouse or with a friend or whatnot. And then as you're walking back, you know, thinking that you're justified in what you do, you might get a good night's sleep or you might be able to, uh, you know, meditate on it a little bit. And then you come back, you're like, wait a second, why, why were we even fighting in the first place? But at that moment, you thought you were right. Uh, and you thought that this was absolutely justified a few a few uh, uh, hours or a day or a few days go by and you realize it, well, it wasn't really worth all that so seeing that this hilm or this forbearance that Allah has is one that uh, comes with this wisdom um, so so knowing that Allah is hold uh, is, is 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 forbearing with us for the reason that Allah knows uh, much better and knows uh, inshallah that we can be better as humans that we don't need to be uh, you know kind of cast aside simply because of one misstep. Uh, and the name As-Sabur uh, comes from the name, the same root uh, of the of the word Sabur, uh, which we're mostly very familiar with of patience. And it means that Allah is not quick to punish those who are heedless or sinful, uh, or even those who mock Allah and, and say false things about uh, Allah. Um, Allah is also patient with those who have uh, well-intentioned efforts and, and, and who believe in Allah and have a sincerity in, in this aspect. And so it's very interesting to see that Allah is patient with those uh, who are kind of like the enemies or opposed to Allah uh, in a different way, or they might mock him or they're heedless. They just don't do things right. Uh, but also patient, especially with those who are uh, Allah's servants. And this may seem odd, but this shows that there is the balance that Allah creates that opportunity for all um, to, to be able to recompense and to be or to be able to return and repent in a sense, uh, but but gives them their fair recompense if they do not pay heed to what they do. So inshallah, it's it's a, it's a it's something for us to think about that this sabur is not just one who is patient for those who are uh, well intentioned or those who are 
uh, devoted to Allah, this patience is one that emanates for everyone. But again, these names must be read all together and not just one in isolation. Uh, scholars say that both of these names, Al-Halim and Al-Sabur, are similar. That forbearance is wider, uh, this hilm is wider though in its meaning and it encompasses patience, uh, but that patience is that which is demonstrated through giving, uh, despite people's you know, heedlessness or their transgressions or anything like that. Uh, and Allah's hilm or forbearance is one that doesn't only forego punishment, uh, but it sends us subtle reminders or corrections throughout uh, our time. If there's something that we were being tested with or trial, uh, it doesn't have to be that it's just that Allah's withholding punishment. Allah may be, uh, you know, uh, forbearing on in different aspects and holding back certain things or, uh, you know, giving, gi being uh, forbearing with respect to some of the, the gifts or the bounties that, that we are, uh, you know, intending to receive or hoping to receive. Uh, and so the consequences are, of our actions are not just delayed, but also the uh, the recording of our wrong deeds. In the tradition of uh, we were taught that uh, wrong deeds or bad deeds are also recorded uh, with a delay and, and, and th that this postponement is also a part of Allah's hilm. And so this forbearance is one that is purposeful. Uh, it's not one that should cause us to drift from Allah. At the end of the day, this uh, forbearance, this patience that is being exercised for humanity by Allah is one that is meant to cultivate another connection and bring people back to Allah rather than make them uh, run away or doubt Allah. And on the other hand, the, uh, the purpose of forbearance is realization and return. It's not just in punishment, but also in reward. That uh, you know, what, what, when we are, uh, you know, when Allah is forbearing with respect to that which is a correction or a punishment, um, it can also be seen uh, in the aspect of the rewards that Allah is also forbearing with that uh, which we which we feel like we deserve, but we don't get. Um, but Allah is also you know, working in our lives in different ways to be able to give us the reward for that which we've done. Um, a sabur is the one who is patient and, and, and patient in the aspect that loves your efforts. We talked about how even the small baby steps that not just loving your efforts, but witnessing your efforts, seeing you when nobody else does, uh, and not being impatient with those of us who might be slowly but surely walking on the path. Um, others might not be in such need, but uh, this patience uh, is evident when we are straying, uh, when we are needing to come back and we feel the path is closed, but knowing that Allah is a sabood, that Allah keeps that path open for all of us, that we can't really achieve this level of being uh, a super Muslim given all of the things that are happening in life. And some of us, uh, some people that we may know may become uh, at, to that level, but most of us, alhamdulillah, are uh, you know, just, just ordinary human beings. We make mistakes, we learn from them, but this is a, a part of that lifting up of the efforts rather than uh, holding up just a, a blind standard for everybody. Uh, instead, calling people to be better, but honoring them in their respective journeys. And so think about Islam as a religion came in 23 years. Uh, it took 23 years to integrate uh, not just a theological revolution, but a social, emotional, psychological, spiritual revolution um, that challenged the norms of society, reintroduced so many things, and met people at their human condition because it knew that it would take people time to be able to overcome the effects of something like jahiliyyah uh, and be able to, when practicing Islam fully, be able to rid themselves um, of such tendencies. And so uh, it, it, it was a patient faith. It knew what it it knew it took time and it aspired for us to be better. And so what can we now do to kind of improve ourselves is something we want to ask us that if Allah is forbearing, if Allah is patient with us, what, um, you know, what we've got right now, uh, we might not have tomorrow. So how can we make the most of this knowing that Allah may be patient uh, and, and forbearing when it comes to our, our death, when it comes to uh, at the end of our life, that Allah is uh, is, is, is patient with us to turn things around. So um, how about we kind of, you know, take initiative on our end that says that, you know, why, why make Allah wait? Why, why not us just kind of jump into it? So uh, Allah's patience and, trans, and, and, and forbearance uh, is also, as we mentioned, with transgressors, is those who go against Allah. Uh, but it's not without a reason or wisdom uh, that we see that nobody is above having that chance to repent or to become a right, uh, or that Allah just solely focuses on 
those who agree with Allah. Allah also gives a way for those who have really been at the lowest of the low, the bottom of the bottom with respect to uh, you know, their faith, with respect to being able to respect Allah and respect other people, uh, but even leaving that door open a little bit for them to have a chance to repent of their ways. So uh, we want to lift that up that when we live with these names, we identify first and foremost, what do we need to improve? We set a goal. We want to work on it. We want to be patient because Allah is a sabur. We want to be patient for ourselves. We want to be forbearing with ourselves and with others. Uh, and we want to be patient with those things that are out of our control, that knowing that life circumstances will, will go on, uh, you know, we'll get hurt in different ways, different things will open up, but to be patient, to see the forest for the trees um, and, and be able to have this, this kind of a hilm with ourselves, to have this patience, to this forbearance, but also um, have the sabr, uh, knowing that Allah works in mysterious ways and how things might happen in our life might not be exactly indicative of what we had conceived of. So these two names, Al-Halim and al sabur uh, are two names that we should really hold on to because it teaches us that not only is Allah patient and, and patient with us, but Allah is forbearing um, with us. Allah is, is willing to hold back uh, these things, is, is willing to walk alongside us and, and, and not react immediately, is, is rooting for us in a sense, wants us to achieve, uh, and wants us to become more God conscious as we go through this month. But uh, it uses these two very essential attributes to help us kind of get there. So we want to recognize that Allah is not a God of hate, is not a God of discrimination, is not a God of impatience, is a God that is patient, is God that is forbearing and wants us to be able to be better so that inshallah we may one day be reunited with Allah. Uh, the last thing that we have here is Al-Qabid and Al-Basit. Uh, these names are a pair that mean the withholder and the expander. Uh, Al-Qabid means to seize or Qabd means to seize the, the root word, to hold or to grip something and Basit uh, means, uh, basit means to uh, give in, uh, to uh, have this uh, abundance to expand something, um, the root of uh, al-basit, uh, that uh, we're, we're giving in abundance, expanding something. They're opposites, as I mentioned, but complements. They with uh, as withholding and giving are things that are done abundantly, but uh, with one thing necessitates the other. So uh, charity is being held, uh, but it's expanded for those who are in need. So Allah holds our charity, but then expands uh, the means for those who are in need, uh, but also does this in the spiritual sense, not just the physical. Uh, so when we're using just one name, it would it would be in, it would be an incomplete meaning if we just say Allah is just al qabid or al basid because there's a balance in these two um, that want, both complement each other, um, and so you can't uh, you know hold one without without kind of have the other. You can't have this withholding that Allah is the withholder and Allah never gives, but you have to have that balance there to hold it true. So you have the withholding and giving of things like provision and food. You have life in and of itself. You have death. Uh, and then you have spiritual connection to, to oneself and to one's heart, uh, spiritual purification. So we want to ask ourselves with these names and the names before, what have we done that with what we've been giving? Have we been have we made the most of it, knowing that Allah can withhold at any time, but Allah can also expand at any time? And how can our good deeds, our uh, sincerity to Allah be a means of expansion and, 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 and you know, releasing in that aspect to help us, uh, you know, not just give in abundance, but to help expand something even more so. Um, when we live with these names, we want to be sure we don't get stuck in that constriction because it can oftentimes happen in our lives and it can feel really taxing on us. But knowing that there will eventually be a period of expansion and, uh, and respite. So you have in the ma'al usri usra that's oftentimes just uh, thrown out there as a generic thing, but just knowing that how it ties to our theology of seeing Allah as al qabid and al basit that Allah is the one who withholds, but the expender. And then inshallah, if you are experiencing one, the other one is not too far away that that will be granted to you in some aspect. Now we want to be a source of expansion for others and embrace those in need. Uh, we want to be a, a person who withholds uh, from ourselves that which Allah does not love, whether it's our speech, our harm to others, uh, how we treat other people, negative behaviors, anything like that. And lastly, for all of these names, we want to balance our divine hope and divine fear with Allah in a healthy way, knowing that uh, Allah withholds 
that a law can also give. Uh, and, and, and this being a sense that we should probably have the sense of fear that maybe this might all be taken away at one point. How can I act on it? And similarly, that maybe a law will give after this hardship, but remembering that at the, the root of these, at the, the, the uh, string that ties all these together, is that aspect of us having agency in all of this, whether Allah is al-halim, al-sabur, al-qabid, al-basid, that Allah is working in mysterious ways, but needs us to work as well um, in order for these things to come about, that in order to know Allah, in order to become connected to Allah, we have to be involved intimately with the world around us at least. Uh, and so we ask Allah to be uh, forbearing and patient with us, al-halim and al-sabur with us uh, in all matters. And we ask Allah to be al-qabid and al-basid for us when we are uh, at the verge of causing harm and uh, when we are at the verge of hurting someone or somebody or doing that which Allah displeases us, we ask Allah to be the one who is uh, al-qabid and then we ask Allah to when we have the resources, when we have different means, when we realize what our gifts are, and uh, maybe it may just come to us at, at some point to be al-balsid and help us to help other people and be a means of our own help and salvation, inshallah. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.